Hello, uh, this is Arun Srinivasa. I am here to help you learn engineering mechanics and its use in structural design. Today we are going to talk about fatigue life estimation, part two. Now we are going to get into the details of how to estimate the fatigue life by computing the moment vector of in, at any point and the stresses due to bending and twisting. For this initial portion, we are going to focus only on bending because uh, that is simpler to get going. And then we will later look at the other uh, more complicated setup. Okay. So here goes. Okay, what's our task here? I got a beam like this, stepped shaft, and uh, you know I'm not looking at any torque on the shaft. It's just a uh, it's just a shaft with a 600 pound force on it. Uh, all the dimensions are given, and what we want to find is what is the fatigue life at the step B. Each location will have a different fatigue life, and we have to actually compute the fatigue life of different locations to figure out which is the worst, which has the smallest life. That's what will control everything. Okay. So that's how it works. We may have to repeat whatever we are doing for sec section D, section C, you know, not just that one step, but also the point where the bending load is maximum as well as the other step. So we'll have to do all of that in order to complete a full calculation. Right now, we are going to focus only on step D. Okay, so what's the process? There are four major items in this process. First one is to find the nominal stress at B. So we're going to focus on that first. Then, but remember, this is just from strength of materials. It doesn't really take into account the fact that there is a step there, and then at the step there is a chamfer or a or a root radius there. You have to account for that. So, so stress concentration factors, and so you you adjust it for stress concentration factor. But if to compute the fatigue life, unfortunately, this is not the R R Moore specimen. So we have to figure out how much stress should I apply to the RR Moore bending specimen to get the same life as this shaft? So you'll have to do corrections because the shaft is not exactly the same as before. And we saw the list of corrections before. Now I'm going to show you how to actually compute the corrections. And then we use the stress versus life equation for the RR Moore specimen. And I will show you that it is relatively simple. And then we will use that to estimate the life of the part. So this is the basic process. Okay. So let's get started. A typical shaft on bearings is always simply supported. So we start out by drawing a free body diagram and finding the bearing or reaction forces. That's where we start. So here's the body. Here's the free body diagram. And we will take moments about A and E to find the reaction forces. Usually, I will do moments in terms of vectors rather than scalars because it'll allow us to figure out which one is torsion and which one is bending. Okay, so now I'm going to do this process by taking moments around the point A. So 7i is from there to there. It's, uh, it's seven units long and 600 pounds. So that's a minus 600j and then 14i times rej. You see what I mean? So this is just cross product and that has to be equal to zero. So RE turns out to be 300 pounds. Now, I can do the same thing for the point E minus 7i now. Let's see why we get that. So now E is that point minus 7i. Can you see it's in the negative i direction times minus 600j minus 14i times RA times j equal to zero. So RA will be 300 pounds. So you see how this works. So notice the color coding is such that you can see which vector is which. Okay, so now we are done. So now we have to take a slice. Cut the section we are interested in. So we cut it at B. Notice we cut it just past the step. So we are always looking at the smaller diameter in the step. Okay, so here we go. We are going to slice it. Bang, slice it up. And there's your step, okay? And then we find the moment vector M. We don't really care about the forces. We don't really care about the V force. We just care about the M. You remember what we said, that moments are more important than shear forces in most of these cases for computing uh, life. So we're gonna focus on the moments. So the key is to take moments around the cut section. So now we are again going to do that. We're gonna take moments around this point P. 
and then the blue star tells you which which arm and which force to take moments around ra times 300 plus mz times k equal to 0 so mz is that remember is the moment around the z axis so mz is 900 inch pounds done that was not hard right so now we find the axial and transport component of the moment vector in this particular problem that is not hard but i'm telling you the general approach in this particular problem it's obvious that the moment is a bending moment so you don't have to think about it but in a general case you should know how to do it the axial component of the moment is called the torque and that's what gives you twisting action the transverse component of the moment is bending uh, moment and that's what causes the bending action So how do you find the axial component? That's pretty easy. Take the dot product of the moment vector with the unit vector along the shaft. In our case, moment vector is 900 k. Unit vector for along the shaft is i. If I take that, t is i. Moment is in the k direction. T dot i is zero. So that's not a big deal. That's obvious. Now we have to find the transverse component. How do you find that? That's the leftover from the axial component. so we are now going to do pythagoras theorem right and what we are going to do is in general it will be like that the twisting component and the bending component are perpendicular to each other so we can use pythagoras theorem and we can compute that t equal to m perpendicular it's 900k obvious pure bending it's very easy subtract the torsion from the total vector and you'll get the bending vector of course if you find its magnitude you'll find the magnitude of the bending moment <coughs> so what's the magnitude of the bend bending moment it is m dot m minus t squared that's the magnitude of the bending moment you can see that from your, from the pythagoras theorem for the triangle in our case that's pretty easy it's 900 inch pounds so that was not a very difficult thing but in general this is what you have to do so the key to finding stresses after you computed moments is to note that the stresses circulate the same way as the moment at that cross section so in our case the moment at the cross section if it is downwards like this or on this face it is uh, it is that way in this face it's down so you will find that sigma max is 32m over pi d cubed it's my over i remember the the way to remember it is my i my over i okay so sigma sigma alternate in our case and i'll tell you why this is alternating stress is 32m over pi d cubed That is 32 times 900 or pi times 0.75 cubed. That is 21,730 psi. That's 21.7 ksi. So I found the maximum stress, and this stress will alternate. Now why it alternates is because the whole shaft is rotating, so that's why the stresses alternate. And we are done with computing the stresses. That's all there is. Okay, so this is done. <clears throat> 